Why was I emotional meeting my mom at the airport? Well, it just felt like such a relief to finally see her. I've been looking forward to it for ages. I had been 10 months without seeing her, and that's one of the longest times I've ever gone without seeing immediate family. So it felt just so good to finally see her. I really like spending time with my mom, and I think time away from friends and family is something that I didn't foresee missing as much as I do in this lifestyle. So my mom is really into our family tree, and she's gone back in 1749, and that ancestor is from Scotland. And I'm interested in our family tree, and so I was excited to be able to be with her while we discovered and visited these places. You've been doing it for the last few years, but what, do you remember a moment of being like? But the idea, I, I don't know, I've always wanted, and I've always asked my mother. Um, I was the one who was interested. I would always like to talk about it, so. Grandma did. I, yeah, Grandma did. So it was always something we had in common to talk about that. So how long ago did you realize that we had relatives in Scotland? <clears throat> it's been a number of years. The only thing I knew was that he, his name was Gregor McKinnon, mm -hmm. and that he was in New Brunswick. I, I had the date 1749, which I was quite impressed with that I'd gone back then. Yeah. 1749 was when he was born, or when he moved to Canada? I don't know. And that's what I'd like to figure out. And that's the only thing I knew about him until just recently. So when you decided we should meet up, I started looking a little bit more at, on the Scotland side. And I found this Linda McKinnon, who Gregor McKinnon is in her family tree, although a, not a direct descendant. And she had found out that he went to North America. He didn't land in New Brunswick, which I just totally assumed he had. Right, yeah. Um, he went to uh, North Carolina, and then when the American Revolution broke out, he was, I believe, a lieutenant in the North Carolina Cavaliers. So you have one McKinnon name to go on. Gregor McKinnon. It's not raining, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to stop. Got their Harry Potter glasses oh. on over there. Oh, good. <laughs> so this is the Harry Potter viaduct, but we're not here because of Harry Potter. None of us have seen or read the books. We're just here because it's a nice looking viaduct, but the train should be by soon. Here's what's happened. I went to edit this vlog and realized that I am missing all of the footage from one day. Uh, it's the day that we go to the Ancestry Center on Sky. Scotland's done a really good job of setting up these Ancestry Centers all around the country where you can go in and they've got um, birth records and death records and census records and all kinds of stuff. So we went to the one on Sky. Unfortunately, there are no records before the 1800s there, and because Gregor McKinnon, our relative, left before that, there would be no record of him or ideally what we were looking for is like his family or something. So it was interesting to go and the girl there was lovely. Um, and then afterwards we went on these amazing hikes that were so beautiful that I wish I could show you and just generally wish I had the footage for myself. But, oh, but then we did go on this really good hike to the McKinnon seat, so we'll show you that. So we've come here for a hike um, because this is the seat of the McKinnon clan, which is our clan. But I've just read this sign that said that this parking is set aside for parking for visitors to the graveyard, which I think could be a treasure trove of information, possibly. Possibly. Are we going to be able to read these? 
we should probably stop short of digging up graves, shall we? <laughs> so we're finding lots of McKinnons here, but they're like from died in the 30s and 40s, so that doesn't help us because we need to find really old McKinnons to make the leap to us because the one McKinnon we know of left um, in the mid 1700s, we think, but presumably not all of his family would have gone with him. No, nope, this one didn't. But what we are learning is that McKinnons live into their like 80s and 90s. Which is why I tell Joel he needs to take good care of himself because I'm going to live to 90. My grandma just turned 97 and lives alone and drives down there. It says McKinnon. Died. Where did she die? Bottom right, maybe. Died at Eagle, which is where we are now, but I think spelled differently, in, and then 18... 87, I think. Uh, maybe it's a 5, actually, because that's really flat on the top. 57. So it's about a hundred years difference between the link that mom has and when this person died. But I mean, I still think it's very cool. It's the oldest one that we can read and happens to have our family name on it, so. So we found it. We think so. To the McKinnon house. Into our ancestral home, Mum. <laughs> Seems treacherous. We're in our ancestral home. <laughs> the family seat, i.e. our clan, called Dunringle. And it's called Dunringle. At one point it was bought by the lead singer of Jethro, what? Tall. Tall. And he wrote a song called Dunringle. Down by Dunringle. Walls. Yeah, filled in. yeah, cause it said it was the keep. What's a keep? This was their keep, but it's referred to as their seat because it would be their gathering place for <clears throat> clan decisions and to to store the treasure or the valuables of their of the clans. Yeah, extra stuff that you didn't need for day to day living gotcha. that you could keep, but you didn't want the British to see, so you could didn't get taxed. It's essentially like your bank account because you don't have a bank, yeah. right? Yeah. How does it feel to be here, Lauren? I don't know. Cool. Yeah. Really cool. Exciting to think that one of our ancestors walked around here. Probably well, more than close. once. Yeah. I mean, this is really older than our ancestor yeah this yeah place but i think it still would serve as a a place they would revere in our family of all the houses it's got to have the best view no yes <laughs> what did we come looking for oh yes what, what did, did we, we come find? looking for what did we find came looking for any links to gregor mckinnon the last descendant that we know of no we're his descendants <laughs> i don't have any descendants <laughs> And what did we find? We did yeah. find the variant is where he would have lived. I mean, you can drive here and imagine that this wasn't all that different. I mean, just experiencing the weather on a walk was a snippet enough for me into what it must have been like to live here. How do you feel about what we saw here? It would have been nice to have found more, but I don't think it's easily done. I mean, if the research center doesn't have anything more to offer, I but yeah. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> what is happening? That's crazy. <laughs> you won't be laughing if we have to do So we didn't find Gregor, but we did find these photos from the day we lost footage. And perhaps we also found a different connection to one's past. A connection gained not by records and certificates, but by experiencing the environment as our ancestors did. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our journey of discovery. We would love it if you could take it one step further and like, subscribe, or share this video. It would mean a lot. See you next time.